Con la tecnología, las fronteras físicas no existen. Es momento de escuchar a Ilya Kretov, director general de mercados emergentes de eBay, con la Forbes Talk, cómo expandirse a nuevos mercados a través del comercio transfronterizo. Bienvenido, Ilya. Thank you, Forbes, a lot for this opportunity and, of course, the audience for joining. Today, we will talk about how to become a global seller through, through cross-border e-commerce. And let me first introduce myself. My name is Ilya Kretov, and I'm general manager for global emerging markets at eBay. Actually, our, uh, our team is responsible for developing sellers and buyers' business across the globe at around 150 markets. Usually, when we think about uh, the innovations and we, we think about something which is going on uh, in the future, we, th we, we may think like where the ideas come from. And Paul Graham, who is the founder of uh, one of the famous Y Combinator, he told uh, at some point of time that you don't need to come up with ideas for the future. You need to live in this future. And today, I want to speak with you about how the future looks like and what is happening today, which for many may look like a future. And when we think about something which we don't know, we usually are preoccupied with some ideas. So let me give you a very simple example. If I ask you, what is the height of the tallest mahogany tree? You may not have an idea of what is that. But if I ask you, Is the plan as tall as a mahogany tree is higher than 75 meters? Then you're already preoccupied in your head with some idea. So some of you may think that it's maybe it's around 80. Some of you may think it's maybe around 60. But in fact, it's all wrong. Uh, to tell you the truth, the uh, tallest mahogany tree is around 45 meters. But when I speak with you with something and give you some idea, uh, you're already being preoccupied with that. And as many, we may not see a lot of examples of how global e-commerce is influencing businesses. But in fact, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. So let me speak to you about that. And before that, before we go into this exciting world of the cross-border trade and cross-border e-commerce, I would like you to give you a quick overview of what eBay is today. So eBay is a marketplace. And uh, the marketplace as a business model has two very simple functions. Function number one is to connect buyers and sellers. And we are doing this across the globe. And function number two is given that both of them don't know each other is to protect the transaction between them. So that's actually entire role of the marketplace. At the same time, we connect millions of buyers and millions of sellers across the world through the e-commerce and we're opening full set of opportunities ebay doesn't have its own goods or uh, it doesn't provide uh, services or goods uh, which it sells so that's why we are not competing with our sellers basically we are usually a partner uh, to our sellers and success of ebay first of all is the success of the sellers Now, let's look at some numbers which exist today. At eBay today, we have 187 millions of active buyers across the globe. If you just put this number into context, every number should be put into context. So the context that, for example, in Mexico alone, you have 126 people living in Mexico. But out of them, only 14 millions are digital buyers. So basically, the number of buyers at eBay is not just 50% higher than the number of people living in Mexico. It's more than 10 times higher than the number of digital buyers uh, in Mexico. And that's happening today. You don't need to live in the future to make it happen. The other thing is that uh, eBay is currently serving 190 markets across the globe. And uh, I will come back to this number. It's, uh, it's actually very interesting. Uh, it may look 
uh, huge, uh, but it's very practical number. And at the same time, 1.7 billion of listings are already available at eBay. What it means for you as a seller, as a business who start to compete in the global environment, it means that you, yes, you start to compete with the global inventory, which is available out there. And uh, it's interesting a uh, process of how you adjust your pro uh, proposition to the global buyers and become successful. And speaking of a cross-border trade, let's talk a little bit uh, about its impact. One of the reasons eBay and the people who have started businesses on our platform have been successful is because global e-commerce has been democratized. Businesses of all sizes have taken advantage of global demand and engaged in a cross-border e-commerce, a significant force for e-commerce. So never before it was a real opportunity and never before it was a better time to jump into the global trade. And frankly speaking, observing what is happening around the globe, I would say that now is the time to jump because otherwise it will be a little bit too late to build these competences. A lot of sellers, again, this is a global e-commerce, a lot of sellers around the globe, uh, not just from Latin America, but also from Europe, from uh, Russia, from Israel, from China, from Hong Kong and so on, they started to do this business many, many years ago, and they already built a significant competence in how to compete in, the, in a global environment. So the time is now. And uh, for those who are interested in the numbers, uh, let's look what e what global e-commerce trade actually represented, how it's represented by the numbers. Here you see uh, some of the data, and let's look through that. First, two thirds of US uh, digital buyers, and US is, is usually represented one of the largest markets across the globe for online consumption. So two thirds of the American buyers spent one out of ten dollars, which they spent in online, they spend it on a cross-border purchases. So basically, they one tenth of all their spending goes cross-border. Cross-border online shopping is estimated to represent around twenty percent of all online purchases by 2022. But it's actually already happening now. It's a it's a very vivid business and it's developing very very strongly. Uh, and that would represent, and that's a uh, significant number, uh, which like many of us you know, like cannot consume in, in a head. Uh, it's more than 627 billions of sales. Yeah, that's a big, uh, big market. And to get even a little uh, portion of this pie is already a significant size of the business. And in the end of the day, when you speak about the global uh, digital buyers, now, uh, during the COVID year uh, and during this lockdown, e-commerce jumped in all the countries, especially in the developing countries, jumped uh, above their uh, estimations two or three years ahead. And at the moment, uh, we're expecting that 2.14 billion buyers will be buying something online worldwide by the end of just this year. So again, like thinking about the future, the future is already, is already here. Uh, and uh, if you're a business, uh, if you have a business uh, that have uh, sales channels such as like physical stores or maybe uh, online stores uh, in Mexico, and you're now interested uh, in exporting, uh, your best alien is the marketplace that offers that technology, that offers the tools, security, and support with uh, uh, all the relevant uh, um, efficiency. So let's look into that and see why marketplace is a good place to start. And frankly speaking, when we speak about the cross-border trade, I'm a big believer that there should be multiple channels, but uh, marketplace is one of the easiest way to start. So first of all, uh, you don't need large investments. Um, the first uh, listing can be done uh, on eBay, like in half an hour right after you see this uh, speech, maybe maybe even, even less. Uh, I saw these examples when I'm doing the speech on the cross-border trade. I see examples of people coming to me by the end of my speech and say like, hey, here is my first export listing uh, at, at eBay and they are becoming success successful exporters. Secondly, uh, eBay uh, 
exist uh, there like for many years. And uh, over the years, we took a lot of competency and uh, a lot of knowledge how to drive traffic and how to bring make you a successful seller. So there are you can take advantages of tools and traffic uh, which is available out there. So for example, uh, you can use uh, uh, you, you can use marketing tools which promote your listings um, in the, in the uh, portfolio of all other listings across across the globe. Uh, at the same time, eBay works very hard to make your listings available in the search engines uh, around the globe into localizing your listings into multiple languages and so on. There are tools to make it uh, to make it happen. Thirdly, uh, you receive a lot of collaboration and uh, support. At eBay, for example, we work hand in hand with businesses uh, so that they know how to use our platform. Uh, and we have training for that uh, to support and highlight the inventory uh, within the site. And finally, uh, you tap into the global demand. As I already mentioned uh, it several times, uh, there are greatest benefits uh, at global marketplaces uh, like eBay. You can access uh, demand from very different parts of the world and expand your markets outside of Mexico. But on top of that, you can also receive uh, the a currency, our currency uh, revenue. And uh, with, a, with this international sales, and you will have all the tools uh, such as analytics to maximize uh, the sales and minimize the cost uh, of the sales. So, uh, Let's uh, go ahead. Uh, and uh, I, I know that, uh, for example, many sellers, uh, what, uh, when they share the emotional stories, they say to me, you know, like when I, uh, a lot of my sales, they come from, uh, for example, United States or from Europe. So when I go to sleep and then I wake up, I immediately see multiple sales. So my morning starts with a nice uh, mailbox uh, of, of the orders which I completed. Uh, so now, uh, before like, um, uh, we go, we go uh, into the, that. Let's look what uh, how the situation looks now for the Mexican sellers and what Mexican sellers are actually selling um, at eBay. So Mexican sellers um, at eBay are very avid exporters. Uh, Ninety nine percent of the businesses which are uh, listed uh, their goods at eBay, they are doing uh, export and they are selling to many countries. Uh, the question I think may arise like to how many countries they sell. Yeah, and uh, here's the interesting statistics. Uh, more than 70% of exporters, they sell to 10 or more foreign markets. Uh, more than 20, uh, like 20 is an average uh, number of foreign markets to which they sell. And here we come again, like to the uh, idea of this mahogany tree. Yeah, is that a limit? So, for example, in Europe, uh, which is doing this business just a little bit longer, uh, an average number of markets uh, to where sellers sell is around 10. An experienced seller who sell for many years and develop their presence, they may sell to 90 uh, and to up to 100 markets. And one of the champions in my region, uh, a seller from uh, Latvia, he's selling uh, parts and accessories uh, for cars. He's uh, one of the most international sellers at eBay, selling to 150 markets. Is that a limit? No, it's not. I know Chinese sellers who are selling to 170 markets and more. Yeah, that, like it's literally sounds like uh, magic and the sky is the limit, but in fact, uh, that's what I see in the statistic. It exists. So then the question I think comes uh, to which countries uh, do sellers sell? Uh, there is no uh, secret about that. Uh, the top uh, selling, the top receiving uh, countries, uh, the top countries where the buyers are um, allocated, are the following: it's United States, it's uh, UK, Germany, Canada. But when it comes, uh, if you develop your business, and again, like there are multiple tools of how to increase your presence in other uh, sites uh, of eBay and other markets. It goes to what we call the long tail of the uh, of the countries. You may sell to Italy and France and Israel and Australia and China and Japan and Korea and so on and so forth. Yeah, there is a as I told like a long list of countries where the parcels uh, and your shipment can go. Uh, the most popular categories uh, are also shown on the slides. It's uh, wristwatches, it's video games, it's um, uh, can be painting. 
PNA is uh, parts and accessories for uh, cars, for motorbikes, for yachts, boats, and so on. Uh, even for planes, it's it's one of the hottest category for many years already at the marketplace. Yeah, it's a huge inventory, uh, structured, but needs uh, to, usually needs to be structured better and better, and uh, international buyers uh, are getting access to that inventory. To give you one anecdotal story about uh, PNA, we have a seller in Greece who is selling different uh, parts for motorbikes. And he told that he believed uh, into, uh, in eBay and into global trade when he sold a, a part from a Japanese motorbike back into Japan. So from Greece, uh, Japanese motorbike into Japan. So this is how it works. Yeah, you never know where your buyer uh, is waiting for you. So different uh, electronics, cameras, shoes, and uh, many, many uh, other categories. So to be frank, at eBay, there are more than 40,000 categories which are available in the taxonomy when you list the site. Now let's look at some uh, of the examples uh, what uh, real people sell and uh, just to give you a spectrum of that. So um, one of the uh, examples, the beautiful uh, lady Martangela. So she's from Mexico and she sells uh, personalized embroidered patches. And uh, she has reached uh, to our question how many countries can be reached. She reached uh, with her sales more than 50 countries. That looks like a small business, but it's a real business. She's selling uh, international to 50 different countries. Next, I want to represent you uh, Alejandro. Alejandro also from Mexico. And he sells vintage uh, wristwatches. Wristwatches is a very popular category. It can be new or vintage, uh, cheap or expensive, you know, like smart watches or just, you know, like simple watches and so on. Uh, a lot of different watches uh, available out there and it's very um, successful category so he sells vintage wrist watches and he's selling to more than 30 countries and so uh, one of the uh, examples which i also want to, uh, to share here and then i will tell you where to look at for more examples is uh, andrea andrea from uh, is a seller from brazil uh and he sells uh different car audio equipment and uh, he reached the more than 20 countries so far and uh, keep, uh, keep growing. So uh, one of the most important moments usually uh, when creating an online business with a global reach is the beginning and planning prior to the start uh, exporting. Because usually it's a foundation of your business. Uh, when the foundation of business uh, are built, uh, you will need to identify its potential and identify its uh, scalability. And frankly speaking, from the first time, based on the experience we have with the different sellers, from the first time, all potential assumptions are wrong. Uh, they, usually the advice which I'm hearing from the experienced sellers, when I'm saying uh, like, what would you advise to the novices and uh, the sellers who just start selling on the marketplace? They usually say, keep trying. Yeah, it's a uh, few pilots which they made with the inventory, with the pricing, with the markdowns, uh, with how they position titles, descriptions, photos, and so on, before they start to be successful. So keep trying. But there are a few, um, uh, few uh, general advices which I want to make uh, today, uh, because uh, I think like, that uh, will prevent from some of the uh, mistakes and maximize your uh, chances for success. So the first uh, is analyze uh, the potential, uh, uh, the potential uh, of your product. Uh, you, if your product uh, is popular and uh, they, therefore in a high demand, uh, you should review your price very well and so that uh, you really have the possibility of uh, selling it. At eBay, we provide you with uh, tools and statistics to show you what uh, is available out there, what the competitors are selling, at what price they are selling, and how you should position uh, yourself from in terms of pricing and titles and uh, to be more searchable, to be more uh, convertible uh, into sales. Second is uh, defining the uh, exporting markets. Uh, usually, um, uh, the question comes to like, okay, where do I want uh, to reach my buyers? And frankly speaking, my advice here would be not to overcomplicate what you are doing, uh, because as I told, uh, the marketplace is a uh, is a function of a big numbers so you have uh, almost 190 million buyers out there those buyers generate 1 billion uh, of sessions uh, coming to the site each month 
out of this one billion sessions, there are multiple billions of searches which they make. And so there is a certain probability that your uh, item and your listing will be demanded in some of the country. But in general, uh, my advice would be to start with one market. Uh, you can consider like US or United Kingdom as, as a start and then keep um, opening the new markets with the new shipping solutions and also with the new uh, language translation and so on. There are tools uh, at eBay to make it happen at, at few clicks. Um, also, uh, understand the fees and commissions that will enable you to, uh, to better uh, and uh, uh, estimate your uh, business model and to understand how much you, you should charge uh, in order to cover uh, eBay fees uh, and uh, payment fees and uh, to be profitable and to maximize uh, your profits from, uh, from exporting. And again, uh, usually uh, when you're selling to the countries like United States, or for example, United Kingdom, or even Scandinavia uh, in Europe, uh, the disposable income there is higher. So there is usually the opportunity to start with a high pricing um, and then uh, adjust the pricing to maximize the, to maximize the volume potential. And finally, uh, choose your best uh, shipping option. Uh, a lot of um, uh, a lot of uh, people they usually start with the national post, uh, but also at eBay there are uh, certain, uh, especially in Mexico, certain uh, providers who can help you with the uh, with the shipping uh, cross uh, cross border and which are uh, successful and so on. The uh, one of the major things which you should look at is that the shipping provider provides you with the tracking, yeah, so that you always know where your parcel is because the seller is responsible for the parcel. And uh, finally, um, if uh, I may leave you with just one link <laughs> or one uh, or like three words in mind, those words will be export.ebay.com. A lot of things which I just uh, described briefly are given there in a much more uh, detailed view. You can find more selling stories. Uh, you can find more uh, descriptions in Spanish on how to start at eBay, how to develop your business at eBay, and how to reach more uh, customers and maximize uh, the impact. And uh, like emotionally, I, I invite you into this exciting world of the cross-border trade. I, uh, as a seller um, myself, uh, I, I remember this uh, feeling when my first sale went somewhere like in the no name for me uh, city, like small town in Italy. And the next one went into some small village in Brazil. That's a very exciting opportunity. You never know where your buyers may be located. So you have a QR code on this slide. Uh, if you have with the phone, just uh, take your camera and uh, scan this. Uh, QR code, uh, and uh, we are waiting you uh, at eBay. And thank you again, Forbes, for the opportunity and, and you, all of you for joining. I wish you very successful sales.